Hey everyone, so um, there were two new features in the ES2023 JavaScript and those features are actually change array by copy and change and array find from last. So in the change array by copy, four new methods were introduced, which are the to sorted, to reversed, to spliced and with why for the array find from last we actually have two new methods which are basically the find last and find last index so in this video we would be taking a look at each and every one of these new array methods which are actually six in numbers we'll be taking a look at each and every one of them one after the other so let's get started the first one on our list is actually the to sorted and the two sorted might actually sound familiar, and that's because uh, we have sort in JavaScript already. We've always had that. So let's take a look at sort first, and we're going to make a comparison between sort and to sorted. So to take a look at sort, let's and uh, let's do this. I would be using this particular um this particular array, which is called unsorted array. And I'll be using this for example. So let's say console console.log on sorted array dot dot sorts. So the expectation of this is that it's going to actually sort our array. And if I should save this, you can see that it's doing just that. So just in case you're not aware, I would like to bring this to your attention. This array over here is actually sorted. So you might be expecting that we're supposed to have 0, 3, and 5, but that's not actually how the dot sort works, basically. So it actually converts all this into a string and it sorts them as a string and not really as a number. So what we have here is that 0, the string 0, comes before the string 1 and the string one comes before the string two, and the string two comes before the string three, before we then have the string five. That's basically how this is actually sorting things out, basically. So this sorting here is actually correct. So this is now sorted. And if this works, why then do we need another way to sort in JavaScript? That's because of this sorting comes with a problem. And the problem is that this is not actually, it's not only returning a sorted value, but it's also altering this original array. I meant to say this array itself. It's also altering this array. And to prove that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say console.log and I'll just console.log the unsorted array without sorting it itself. And if I should come around and I save this, you can see that these two arrays here are actually sorted. However, I actually sorted only one. So let's do this. If I should come over here and I take this particular array, the unsorted array, I place it at the top and I actually sort this one over here. And this one here is unsorted. So you can see we have unsorted, sorted and unsorted. And when I save this, take a look at what we have here. So you can see that this one over here, because of it's the first one to get executed, it remains unsorted. But after sorting this particular one, it, when we sort this one, this is actually sorted. But after sorting, we can see that this particular sorting happening here has already altered the original array. And as such, when we console.log the original array, it appears to be sorted. And this could be a problem. Before the two sorted, we usually solve this problem using things like the spread operators. So that simply means for us to do this, we need to um, create a new instance of this particular array. Maybe we use a spread operator or something. So we can just say const. Um, let me call this sample because I'm out of names. So, and I just use the spread operator to say what unsorted. Um, I'm going to say the unsorted array. So if I should come here now to say sample.sort, you can see what we have here, but this is um, me writing more code in order for me to do this. But in the ES 2023, we don't really need to 
um, perform all this hack. All we need to do is to use the what the two sorted to fix this. So we just need to say that the unsorted array, the unsorted array dot instead of saying sort, we just say that what to to sorted. And we come over here to sorted. And when we save this, I think I missed this. Okay, so we say to sorted. And when we save this now, you can see that we're actually having same values over here. This is the original array, the original array. This is the sorted array, which is over here. And this is the original array again. So this is basically what the to sorted is actually doing. And like I said initially, to sort it is actually under the change array by copy, which simply means it is making, it is automatically making a new copy of the array and it's sorting its new copy of the array and not the original array itself. So this could really come in handy in several occasions. So now that we know this, we already have a kind of an idea that each and every one of these other methods is actually creating a new copy of the original array itself, but they also have their unique differences. So let's take a look at the others. So I'm going to comment this out and I'll be taking a look at the next one, which is the tool reverse. So for the tool reverse, I'm going to take a look at the old one first, which is console.log. So let's so console.log and I'll be using the number array for this this time around. So I would say number array that, um, Let's say number array dot sort, um, not sort, sorry, dot reverse. And if I should reverse this now and I save this, you can see this is the original data, an array of num numbers from one to nine. And here we have from nine to one, which means it's sorted. But if we should take a look at this, at the original value, we can see that the original value was being altered because this is what the original value looked like and this is what we have here. So to solve this, all we need to do is to use the tool reversed. So I'm just going to come here and now say to reversed. And if I should save this now, you can see that this is actually reversing the new, is reversing this array without affecting the original value itself. And this is actually handy. So let me comment this out and show us the two splice. Initially, when we have the splice and we have the two splice, right? So let me show you the splice first. So I'm going to say that what the number array that's what dot splice and the splice is I'm going to um, pick up my start and position, which is the index zero, and I'm going to say how many um, items do I want to delete. Let's say I just wanted to get to the uh, index five. So, so in this case now, I'm going to say that um, console log dot log and I'm going to say I want to console dot log the number array. So we already know the drill, right? All this old, I want to call it old, like the previous methods, they actually do alter the original array, which simply means that this um this dot splice method here is actually going to alter the original array. But what the dot splice itself does is that it's going to take out everything from here down and it's going to be left, we're going to be left with just from the number six, we're just going to be left with this down to the number nine over here. That is the expectation and that's what we're going to see. So let me save this first and let's see. Now, can you see that when we console the log this, we're having only from six down to the number nine, but this is where things start getting interesting. In the previous one, which is the array that supplies, if I should console that log this, if I should console that log this, it's actually returning the numbers which got deleted. This simply means that I'm expected to delete what? From one to five, right? But it's returning it as the value of this particular expression. And when I come over here, it has altered the original array with the actual value itself. And this sometimes had actually got me confused some time ago. And, but when we got to the um, to splice method, it is actually very, very straightforward, basically. And to do to use this, all I need to say is what to splice. To splice. And if I should save this now, you can see that what is being returned is the actual value that we actually need because we're technically removing these other values by the left hand side. And what we need in this our case is basically the values of the array 
um, on the right hand side. So this actually returns the original value. And like you can see, our original array is returning the um, actual value. And as you can see, our original array is not in any way affected by what we're doing over here. So this keeps our original array intact. So now that we've seen this, we can talk, we can then talk about the array.width. So the array.width method is actually used for replacing things. And let's see what we mean by that. So let's take a look at our number array again. Let's say we want to replace the number four. We want to change it instead of being an actual number. We want to change it to be um to be in words F O U R four, right? So to do this now, if we were to do this um initially, what we're going to say is that the number array um the number four here has an index of three. So we're going to say use a square bracket and say index of three should be equal to the string of what F O U R. So if I should console that log this now, console that log this, which is the number array, and I save this, you can see that we have one, two, three, and we have four, five, six, and of which this is actually a string. So to do to use the array that's with method to do this same thing, it's just going to be a one liner. All we need to do is to say console this log, and we we'll say the number, the number array dot with and we just need to specify the index which is an index of three then we also specify the string or oh, let's use another one so we could have some differences so we want to change that to five now we're going to save with this and here we have f i v e and if i should save this now you can see that we even have the number five written in words over here so this basically what the array what the um, array.width method could be used for. So this takes us to the next feature, which is the array find from last. And over here, we have two methods. We have the array find last, and we have the array find last index. And this is actually a new method that I'm very, very excited with, basically. So we already have the array that's find, basically. And we also have the array that's at. And the reason I'm making this comparison is that just taking a look at this name, find the last, it's, it tells us already that, oh, it's useful looking for um, maybe something like the last item in an array. And one, one might argue that why do we need this when just last year in the ES 2022, an array.at method was introduced. And if you don't know what I'm talking about concerning the array.at method, please take a look at this video over here. So, this is actually useful because we can actually play around more logic with this. It's basically same thing as the array that's find, but this time around, it's starting from the last position, from the end of the array. So let's take a look at this array again. Let's say we want to get the last item of this array. How do we go about that using the array that's find last? First off, to use the array.at, I just need to show us this method first because I think it's important for us to know. We can just simply say, um, let me comment this first so it doesn't show up in the console. So we can just simply say console.log and we can say that's the number array.at and we can say minus one and that's going to return to us nine, which is the last element of this array, basically. And we can also do this with the array that's find last, basically. So to do this with the array that's find last, all we need to say is just go array, that's this number array, dot what, dot find, dot find last. So this is very similar to the array that's find, basically, but every single thing that you do in your normal array that's find, you can also do it here. But this time around, it's going to start the iterating through the array from the end of the array instead of from the starting point of the array itself, which simply means that it's going to go from here to here instead of going from here to here. So that's just basically how it works. So what we just need to do is to say that we just need to add an arrow function here. And when we just do this, it's going to give us exactly same value. And you might want to see that, oh, we're actually writing a whole lot of things here. I prefer using array.at, and I strongly agree with you. But it's just because the reason why I'm going to use this is because I can actually perform 
more operations in here than I can do with the array that at basically. So let's take a look at this. Let's say that I want to find the last item of the of this particular array, but I need only the last item that is not greater than five, basically. Now, for me to do that, I can actually come over here and I can say where n is actually less than five. And if I should save this now, you can see that it's given me four because four is actually the last element of this array that is not greater than five. Let's see what we're going to have over here if we should use this. Let's use unsorted array to do this. And let's save this over here. Now, can you see in this particular array, the last element of this array that is not greater than five is actually zero over here. Now, remember that we have three. Remember that we have um, we have everything, but the last one here is actually zero. So let's reposition this. Let's make this to be three and let's make this to be zero. So if we should save this now, and you see that the last element of this array that is not greater than five is now what? Is now three, basically. So these are the different kind of operations that we can perform with array dots find last. Now, we can even perform much more deeper operations using the array that's fine last. Over here is um, a data that I created using the, um, which is user browsing activity. So I'm going to expand this so we can see what we have over here. So here is an object of user data, basically the browsing activity. So we can see the username, we can see the user age, the location, the date that this particular activity was performed and also the activity in uh, itself. So in this case, we say we can say that visited uh, www.example.com and here we have search for restaurants near me and here we have clicked on an article, blah, blah, blah. So now that we have a an idea of what this browsing activity looks like, let's see what we can do with Array to find last. So first up, I want to know the last person among this list with the age of 24. So I can go through this and look at it one after the other, but let's just use the array um, dot find last to do this. So I'm going to come over here and all I need to do is to say, um, this is what I have to change this user browsing activity dot find last. And I would say that way n dot age, because I'm interested in age now, where n dot age is equal to 24. So in this case, I'm saying that get all the particular data or the particular um, object that has an age of 24 and find the last of them all. So if I should save this now, you can see that it returns to me this particular date. Let's expand it. Now we can see that truly the age is actually 24 and we can also see that this, we can see the date, the location, and the name of this particular user. So let's see if this information is even correct. So we can come over here, expand this. I'm just going to search for, I'm going to search for 24 so we can see all the occurrence. So here I go 24, and okay, so this is the first occurrence here, and this is the next one, the next one, and this is actually the last one, which is equivalent with what I have over here. We can see search for fashion trends and all that. Now I call it the last one, that's because we have the 24 over here in my expression. So we, like from what we can see here, we can see that this is actually correct, but we can do more. Let's make this to be more realistic. So let's say that we want to know the last activity, the last website or the last activity that was performed on a specific day, let's say, that was performed on a specific date. So let's just take this date over here and let's copy this. Let's copy this now and minimize this. So all I need to do in this case is that I want to know the last activity that was performed on this day. All I need to say is dot date and I'll change this to be a string and I'll paste this date over here. If I should save this now, I'm being returned with this particular active with this particular object. So now we can see that the person who performed the last activity on this day is actually of age 26, and this is the person's name. This is the person's location where the activities were being 
was being carried out. So let's cross check to know if this is also correct as well. So we um we are just going to take this date and search all the activity by this date. So I'll copy this, find search for this date. So we have five occurrence as well. So let's expand this so we can see. So we have this is the first one, the second one, the third one. And I think this is the last one. And we can see that it's basically the same thing that we have here. So this is basically how the array.find last actually work. And I find this to be very, very useful as well. So moving on to the last one, we have the array.find last index. So the array.find last index is basically the same thing as the array.find last with the only difference of instead of returning the actual object or the actual element of the array, it returns the index of that particular element. So if I should copy this over here and I paste it here, let me comment this so we don't have duplicate. So, and I paste it here. All I need to do is to add index to make it array that's find index. And instead of this to return to me this data, instead of it to return this data, it is actually going to return the index of this particular data. So if I should save this now, we can see that this particular data has the index of 13. So these, uh, these are basically the six new array method that has been shipped with um, ES 2023. And I really hope you find this useful. However, the big question would be, is this compatible across all browser? Can we start using this now? How, what's the compatibility of each of this method? And that's what I'm going to be showing you now. So for the first one here, which is the array that's sorted, we can see that it is compatible almost everywhere, with an exception of Firefox for desktop and Firefox for mobile as well. So these are the only two compatibility issues that it has. However, I uh, would like to state that if you're using this for um, Node.js or any backend server-side um, programming, you should take note of this, that this is only compatible from the version 20 of Node.js upwards. So if you have Node version 18 configured on your server, you might need to take a look at this properly before using it. So the compatibility for .sorted is actually same with the compatibility for dot .reversed, also same for dot .spliced, and the same for dot .width as well. However, the dot .find last and dot .find last index has better compatibility because these guys are compatible across board, and it's also supported by Node version 18.0 as well. So feel free to use um, develop.dot um, dot find last and dot find last index as well because they are compatible across board as that today. So that is all from for this video. And if you do find this video useful, remember to like this video, remember to subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye for now.